my name is Charlotte Holland. Welcome to my TV show. It's called Silah. Silah is a Hebrew word. It means stop, pause, and think about it. Think about it and meditate on it. It's a powerful word. Do some research for yourself. It has more than one definition. You already know that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching out there on TV 20 Comcast Cable in Detroit, Michigan. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching on BGNTVGospel.com. Yay! And thank you for watching on YouTube or online, internet, however you're watching. We appreciate you. We love you. We pray for you. And we want you to pray for us. We are here to spread the love of God, His peace, His joy, unity, and hope. We start off with saying we are here to spread the love of God. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank my special guest, Missionary John, is in the house. Thank you. It's good to be here again. Again. I don't even know how many times you've been on Sila. Oh, about a half a dozen. Whoa. <laughs> and we're getting younger. Yeah. <laughs> we're not getting older. No, we're getting wiser and we're getting better. Um, our topic today, uh, I, I had a... It was like, I didn't know what topic to use, but I came up with this through prayer. Unity between Christians and Muslims. Unity between Christians and Muslims. So, unity, period. We said we are here to spread God's love, peace, unity, and hope and joy. So, here again, we're bringing up unity. That's what the world needs. We need love and we need unity. We need to come together. Amen. Amen. And there's an acronym uh, for Islam. Now, Islam is the religion and Muslims are the people. So I-S-L-A-M, and I had a chance to say this in a mosque a few days ago in Dearborn, I sincerely love all Muslims. Or to be a little bit more honest, I should love all Muslims. I-S-L-A-M. So they'll know we're Christians by our love. And John 17, 21, that we all might be one so that the non-Christians will know that Jesus came from the Father. So we really, uh, Muslims respond to love, and that's what I want to talk about today. Amen. You know what they say in the Bible, love never fails. It's, love is powerful. Power, it's power in the Word of God, and you said one. So it made me think, it's only one God, and most people in the world will agree to that. Right. Now, the God of Islam... Um, Allah is the word in the Arabic Bible for, for God, and Allah is what they use in the Quran, but there's different meanings. So where we get in a problem is uh, we say Jesus is God, and they say Jesus is not God. So that's the main problem, but there's a lot of overlapping stories. I mean, they have Adam and Eve, and Noah, and Abraham, and Moses, and, yeah. Moses, and they have the stories quite similar. They and the even Virgin Mary. And don't forget Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Muslims believe Jesus is born of a virgin. Jesus did miracles. He raised the dead. He multiplied the food. Um, he was taken to heaven. He's coming back. So, so they love Jesus. So Christians, right. you need to know that the Muslims love Jesus. In fact, they might not have known that. And in Dearborn, when uh, when we talked to them about Jesus, say we love Jesus. In fact, we can't be good Muslims unless we love all the prophets, including um, a Abraham and Moses and David and, and, and Jesus. So they, we have to love all the prophets, you know. And sometimes they say, well, if you love Jesus so much, why don't you read what he has to say? And here's an Arabic Bible if you'd like to have one and read it, or a Jesus film in multiple languages. So uh, we give out the Jesus film based on Luke in many different languages so anyway that's we do have a lot in common with mm -hmm. the Muslims mm -hmm. uh, and I think the key word is respect um, Aretha Franklin had a song <laughs> called respect R-E-S-T-E-C-T -E -E find out what it means to me R-E-S-T-E-C-T -E -E <laughs> yeah that's it and I'm not a singer now but that respect I think we could help go a lot farther <laughs> talking to Muslims if we have respect. So we don't try to choose up sides and start throwing darts and, and sort of uh, you know attack Muhammad, Quran, and Islam. We want to talk about what we have in common, and that's mm -hmm. what you started off with, and then lead up to what 
the Bible has to say about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are you with us? Okay, now I have down here, I just, I, when I started praying and I was putting this together, I had no idea where I was going to go with it, how it was going to flow, how we were, we didn't know what each one was going to say, but I wrote this down. This is for you, for you, for me, for anybody that's listening. I got down here. In the world, we have God and the devil. We have angels and we also have demons. We have good and we have evil. We have right and we have wrong. And we have love and we have hate. Now, what we want is love. And like you said, respect. We need to come. We need love even in the black community. You know, just with the nationalities, each, everybody needs love. Wouldn't you agree to that? Oh, well, that's what the Bible says. Um, they'll know we're Christians by our love. 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, kind, etc. Mm -hmm. And so love is what people respond to. And um, how do you spell love anyway? Uh, sometimes when I work with Muslims, I spell it T-I-M-E. It takes an average of 30 gospel presentations for the average Muslim to get saved. So we got to think marathon instead of the sprint. So uh, if we really love someone, we spend time with them and listen to them and and I just love to pray for them and uh, and I think that's a key is listen to your Muslim friends and and then offer to pray for them don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus though pray in the name of Jesus and sister Charlotte has a great story about praying for her Muslim boss right I used to work for um, a Muslim and he owned a company and I didn't really want to work for a Muslim Okay, but God sent me there. I didn't know why, but I found out later. But I ended up praying for him in an emergency situation. And he did not want to go to the hospital. But it, he was fighting for his life and <laughs> right before our eyes. And it was a situation where time was like, <laughs> we don't have time. I, I don't even think EMS could have gotten there. So we're talking about the power of prayer and the power of love and the power of God. So I'm a Christian. And he's a Muslim, and we're standing there watching this man. He looked like he was going to die. He changed colors. You know, he couldn't breathe. So I asked him, I said, can I pray for you? And he said, yes, like that. And I said, but I pray in the name of Jesus. He said, okay, just like that. So not all, because there was other Muslims there that worked, worked there as well. So I started praying for him, and I mean... I prayed my heart out. I prayed whatever God gave me to say in this prayer for him. He's alive. He lived. Right before our eyes, he was able to breathe. He got his natural color back. You know? He was smiling. He was happy. He was thankful and he was grateful. And then God didn't stop there. This other lady that I didn't like at all, but you don't have to like everybody, but you have to love everybody. Now, she says to me, will you pray for me? And I, she never even spoke to me. I could say good morning and she wouldn't speak. <laughs> but I still said good morning. So I said, what do you want me to pray about? And I said, in, in general, a general prayer or a specific. And she said, I, I have cancer. I'm on chemo with tears in her eyes. So, I mean, God can use you if your heart is right to be a blessing to the Muslims to any nationality, but you got to have clean hands and a pure heart. Would you not say? Oh, no, you preach it. You got to really, really love the Lord with your whole heart. So don't be trying to reach nobody else if, if your heart ain't right. Yeah, and I had a similar experience. I was riding my bicycle around the world preaching the gospel and I was bicycling through 36 countries, four and a half years, Ooh. preaching the gospel from Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Burma, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Syria, all over Middle East, all over Europe, across Praise the United the States. Lord. It was all for Jesus. So I was just getting started in Singapore, and I rode my bike 
to uh, Malaysia, came to a Muslim fishing village, had no place to sleep. So these Muslim fishermen asked me if I, they said, you can sleep on the floor of our, our house on the beach up on the stilts. I came back from swimming the next day and there was a man sick on the floor. As I walked in, they said, are you a doctor? I said, no, I'm not a doctor. And they were disappointed. I didn't know what to do. I just checked the guy's pulse and breathing. He was having trouble breathing. Hmm. They brought in a witch doctor, a medicine man, Ooh. a BOMO, try to do uh, healing. Try to, but the guy got worse. Oh, and my. he started struggling and fighting. The witch doctor held on his arms. The Muslim fisherman held on his legs. I put my hand on his chest and began to pray for him as the Holy Spirit gave me the words. Mm -hmm. And he started to settle down. Wow. Then I started praying for salvation for him. Acknowledge, repent, confess forsake, believe, receive. He didn't understand it. He didn't speak English. And he started crying out, Allah, Allah. And then this time I had discernment that he had an evil spirit. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this demon to come out of this man. Come out. And to everybody's surprise, including mine, the man was healed and sat up just like that. See? Well, it's against the law to tell Muslims about Jesus in Malaysia. But the Lord gave me the boldness. And I had some Christian literature in their language about Jesus casting the demons out of the man in the cemetery, the demons went to the pigs, the pigs went over the cliff, the, and uh, I gave this literature to the witch doctor, the Muslim men all gathered around, had a discussion about evil spirits, the ladies brought out the food, we had a big feast, and I came back to Singapore rejoicing, saying even the demons respond in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But then I got rebuked as I read in Luke chapter 10, it said, don't be happy that the demons respond in my name, but be happy that your name is written in the, the Lamb's, Lamb's Book, Book of Life. Life. That was Woo! the confirmation that I needed, that God was with me on that world bicycle trip. And next year, when I retire at age 70, I'm planning to go to Singapore and find a Malay Muslim boy that I help lead to the Lord that's now probably around 60 years old. And I'm going to see if he'll take me to that village to find that man that was delivered of that demon, maybe even find the witch doctor. Wow. So, uh, Lord willing, I hope I can do that next year. Wow. I'm going to be praying for you. Thank you. I'm going to send extra prayers up when you're on in those other countries and going around the world and touching people's lives and changing people's lives and praying in the name of Jesus and casting out demons. I'm a, I'm a, just remember that. I yeah. will be praying for you. I, yeah. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior, y'all. We we could use some more, y'all. I'm a soldier. Well, no, uh -uh. I'm a general now. I was a soldier yeah. in the army of the Lord. Yeah. And you can pray, too, for missionary John as the Lord reminds you. Amen. And pray for this network. Yeah. <laughs> BGNTVGospel.com. Yeah, now here's the good news. More Muslims have become Christians in the last 40 years than in the last 1,400 years since Islam started. Ooh. So they asked over 1,000 Muslims from 100 countries, what was it that attracted you to Christianity? And we're talking about love. Mm -hmm. Number one is love. When they observe the loving lifestyle of Christians over a long period of time, then they're attracted to Christianity. But then when they get the Word of God in their own language, and uh, we have the Jesus film here in 24 languages right here, mm. uh, we get the Word of God to them, then they're very attracted to assurance of salvation. You see, we, we have this idea that, that Jesus can forgive us and we can have assurance of salvation, but they have this idea that if their good works outweigh their bad works, maybe Allah will allow you into paradise, but we have assurance of salvation. So that's a good thing for Christians to share with your Muslim friends, is show them from the Word of God why you know that you know that you know that you died today, you'd be with God in heaven, mm -hmm. whereas in Islam, Allah is distant and unknowable. But we have a personal relationship with God through yes. Jesus, and that yes. attracts them to Christianity as well. Mm -hmm. And number four is signs, wonders, and miracles. Mark 16 uh, talks about signs, wonders, and miracles will follow the preaching of the word. And it's interesting that 20% of all Muslims who become Christians have had dreams or visions about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They didn't necessarily get saved from that, but it initiated their interest in the gospel. Then they sought out a Christian, a Bible, something on the... Christian TV like this one or radio or internet mm -hmm. and um, they they got saved so that's the good news Muslims are getting saved all over the world and uh, they're disillusioned with Islam and now they're open to uh, the truth found in the Word of God the truth will set you free Amen. <laughs> now what tell them again where that scripture is about what love is yeah 
There's it was in a, Corinthians, right? Yeah, there's a lot of passages. But the love. one that said love is patient, love yeah, is Yeah, that's First Corinthians 13. First yeah. Corinthians 13, I that's think it's the, 1 the, through 8. Yeah, it's a love chapter. And if you look at it, First Corinthians, it's a sandwich. First <laughs> Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. First Corinthians 12 is about divine power mm. or the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Then divine 14, 1 Corinthians 14 is divine harmony. And that's like the two pieces of bread. And then right in the middle is the meat, oh. is the love chapter, divine love. And it's really a description of Jesus' life as well. So that, those are that. But they'll know we're Christians by our love. And I think that's a, a key one. We need, we need to have unity and mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. between... All Christians. So you can all have records. joy and hope and peace. <laughs> yeah, fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace. Patience. Amen. Now you know what? Um, I found while I was researching that um, there's a book that you can purchase or find or buy and read, and it says uh, you can share this um, book and reach the Muslims for Christ. If that's what it's about. It's edited by Bill, like Saul, I think. Anyway, S A A L. And published by Moody Press. But this, it says, Share with them reaching Muslims for Christ. So I haven't read it. You haven't read it. But it's worth a try. I've read a lot of books like that over the years. Okay. And the number one thing is uh, a challenge for Christians to just go up and say hello to Muslims. Because you see them in the stores. You see the women with the scarves. So you know they're Muslim. And you go up and just say hello, and just see how the Holy Spirit leads, mm -hmm. and, and listen more, and um, show respect, of course. And then you'll you'll see that they have a felt need, you know, and say, "I'd like to pray for you." You know, I'd like to pray, and you could pray right there in the store, or maybe later. And next time you see them, I've been praying for your, you know, your sick relative. How are they? You know, and uh, showing friendship. But most of all, you want to get them into the Word of God. They're a little bit afraid of that. But uh, you get them into the Word of God in their language is even better. So that's, why, again, why I love these Jesus films, uh, because they have it in their language, and it's all based on Luke to get the Word of God. So that's uh, one of the principles, is show interest in them, love them, get the Word of God, pray for them. And, and respect then, them. And respect them. All right. Now, um, also, you uh, miracles. They, they love miracles. We all love miracles. We all want a miracle and need one sometime. So I was praying one day, and the Lord said, um, he gave me, he said, the words came. I love miracles. I, I believe in miracles, and I expect more miracles. Mm. Uh, now, when I say it now, I say, I love you, Abba, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit. I love you guys more than I love miracles. I just want to keep the keep it in order, in the right order. <laughs> and um, I have down here that the Muslims, when you were saying what they believed, you know, I got down here. They don't believe in um, the crucifixion. They don't believe that Jesus died for our sins. So there's nothing you can force on them. That comes from prayer and through the Holy Spirit. He is going to be the one. It's almost like what we say sometimes. We plant the seeds mm -hmm. and somebody else will water it and then God gets the increase. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like that because we plant the seeds and they will remember. Mm -hmm. It might have been a minute or 36 second conversation. Mm -hmm. you know, But they will remember that. And then... When they do hear through the Holy Spirit or the vision or the dream about Jesus, then that's when the transformation will happen. And there's things you can do, too. Uh, of course, we believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but they mm -hmm. only believe in one God. So uh, that's an issue there. But you can use illustrations. Uh, the H2O, water can be solid, liquid, gas. Um, you know, you can give illustrations like that. And, but most of all, get him in the Word. And you can show him when Jesus was baptized. Uh, God the Father spoke from heaven. This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus was right there. And uh, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. In fact, uh, a lot of times I teach Muslim boys the Christian handshake, and they don't even realize the significance of it. And this is what it looks like. Father, Son, and the 
Holy Spirit descended like a dove on Jesus. Amen. Take that Did back to that? the hood. Yes. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, beautiful oh, I, that, you tell them your age now. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, they do believe that Jesus was a holy prophet. So look up the word holy. That's deep. Because God is holy and he wants all of us to be holy. Mm -hmm. A holy prophet. They do believe that Jesus was a holy prophet. Now, um, and this is a good point. Um, uh, you don't want to put down Muhammad. Um, no. The Quran does say, Muhammad, confess your sins to Allah. But the Muslims actually believe Jesus was without sin. And one of the hadiths, the supplemental sayings of Muhammad, not in the Quran, says that when every baby is born, it's poked by Satan and made to cry. But, but it says that Jesus was not touched by Satan when he was born. So he's unique. So talk about the uniqueness of Christ. You don't have to put down Muhammad, but you can say, can you think of anyone who was holy as Jesus? Can you think of any prophet that did all these miracles? Can you think of any prophet that was born of a virgin? So talk about the uniqueness of Christ. We want to lift up the light instead of cursing the darkness. Yes, and we, we want to give information too because we're sharing things that I know most of you don't know or some of you don't know. And I'm learning too. You're learning too because as you travel all over the world, you, you're not going to be the same when you get back. That's right. <laughs> and I have down here that um, most Muslims, they do not celebrate Christmas. But you already know that or you heard that. But some American Muslims, they do celebrate Christmas. And I celebrate Christmas with some. And uh, so. And the, the Muslims have their own holidays. There's Eid al Adha. That's the reenactment of Abraham sacrificing his son. So we'd like to talk about John the Baptist um, said about Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So you can go to their holiday and then point to John the Baptist. And they know about John the Baptist, son of Zechariah, is talking about Jesus, this Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You have to explain it. And their other major holiday is Ramadan, where they fast for 30 days during daylight hours, and then they have a big feast at the end. But every day at sunset, they invite non-Muslims to come and join them in food. So I go with them and uh, in the mosque or even at their homes is better yet. And uh, you don't have to participate in any of their Islamic stuff, but you just join them with their food. And then you can talk about what the Bible says about fasting. Jesus said, when you fast. When? Jesus expect all Christians to fast. Mm -hmm. But we... Um, we don't have all the rules and regulations that Muslims have about how to fast. And then uh, what I spoke about here on this program uh, about a year or two ago was when we fast, we do it in secret. We wash our face, comb our hair. So we do three things in secret. We fast, we pray, and uh, we give our money in secret. So we're not doing it to show off, but, but we, we want to obey the Word of God and fast. Amen. In fact, I fast and pray for Muslims every Friday. been doing it since 1987. And if you want to go to a website, jumaprayer.org, www.j-u-m-a-a-p-r-a-y-e-r.org, and it gives prayer requests for every Friday to fast. And there's probably 100,000 Muslims that are fasting and, and praying And you know what? Muslims. Speaking of fasting, Christians, we, we fast. When we fast and pray, it's more power in that. But we've got these similarities, but we still got work to do as far as coming together in unity. And the Quran talks about um, the miracles of Jesus and uh, him giving sight to the blind and raising people from the dead. So that those things will draw the Muslims because some of them don't want to die and they don't want to be sick. And we can share with them about the healing power of Jesus. And... Um, Speaking of Bibles and the Quran, just take both of those out for a minute. And all you got to do is follow the, book, the golden rule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just pe treat people like you want to be treated or treat people like God wants you to treat them. It's as simple as that. And uh, we, we're running out of time and we got a lot. I got a lot down here. <laughs> but no way can I touch it all. I was going to tell you some things about Ishmael and talk about Muhammad, but the time won't allow uh, but I, I will say the Holy Spirit will, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will touch their minds and their hearts mm -hmm. so that they will know and come to know the true 
and living word of God. That's right. And that Jesus did die for their sins That's so right. that they will go to heaven and live on Paradise Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> That's for you too. And may, maybe we should pray right now and I'll say a prayer and you can repeat it. But and before before we do that, um, I want to make sure I say, because uh, I don't know, how, like I said, the time, but we're going to get it in. And if not, call me. You call me for salvation. But we're all related, in my opinion. So we got to stop all this suicide bombers and the, the right. terrorists. That That is not the way. And um, happy blessed birthdays and anniversaries or whatever you're celebrating out there, all the listeners out there. And quick advertisements, I want you to shop at Refined Resale on Woodward Avenue in Royal Oak. And I want you to go by Louisiana Creole Gumbo Restaurant on Gratiot Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. Yum, yum, yum. And also the Soup Dive Restaurant on West 12 Mile in Southfield, Michigan. And I want you to call Sister... Well, you can call me about information about this dental plan that's only $24.95, and up to 25 people in your household. So that's a dental plan. It's a combination of a vision plan, and it's, it's just good to know. So let me know. You got my number at the end of the, the program. My number will be on the screen off and on. And then go on YouTube and then look up, uh, type in Charlotte Holland, or you can go on YouTube and put Charlotte Holland, the devil is a lie. Or put Charlotte Holland on YouTube, Joyful Days, or Here, Here, Now, or Need Help, or Sila. S like in special, E-L-A-H. Happy, blessed holidays out there to all the viewers. Enjoy your family and your friends and get your praise on because you got to praise God because he is worthy. Hallelujah. And I love everybody. I pray for everybody and I forgive everybody. Can yes. you do that salvation prayer before we go off? Yes. Sister Charlotte's going to repeat, so just re follow up, pray along with her. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For sending your son. For sending your son. Jesus. Jesus. To die on the cross. To die on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. I believe. I believe my sins, my sins can be forgiven. Can be forgiven. And I can be. And I can be a new person. A new person in Christ. In Christ. Help me. Help me to be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit. And be a bold witness. And be a bold witness for Jesus. For Jesus. To everyone. To everyone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know if we're off the air, but I'll just say thank you, Lord, for this program and allowing us to try to bring Christians and Muslims together in love. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Clifton Davis, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked, it's your boy D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Lyington, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Grace and Peace family, this is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network.